you have to assume in this life that nobody's going to give you a chance. Yeah. You have to assume. You have to go, you know what? People are going to throw shade on me. You know, Dan from Brea was great to me. Mitzi Shaw. Yeah. Jan from the Ice House. Mm-hmm. The other guy from the Ice House, Bob. Right. Mm-hmm. They were good to me. Everybody else was according to your credits. And I know who those people are. And today I treat them a certain way. And if mm-hmm. they want to give me money, I'll take it. I'm not going to be a hypocrite. It's forgotten about. But I know who's, you know who's there in the beginning. Right. It's weird because when I went home, I sat across from people a couple of nights at different dinners. And while I was eating dinner with them, I looked at them and I go, these people were my friend before I ever sold the ticket. These people were my friends before I even thought about comedy. These people were the, my friends when they were getting abused for being my friends. Mm. Like, they were getting abused for fucking hanging out with a junkie who just robbed their friend's house and all this shit. And it made me think of a story I told on one of the Ari shows about my mother had a friend as a writer, and they were always tight for years. And my mother had a couple different friends. I didn't, you know, I paid attention to them. I I liked her because she'd always give me 50 bucks, and, you know, and she always did coke in front of me. And I liked that. As a kid, she did coke anywhere, at church. In a restaurant, in a hotel, yeah. on the beach. She would just do a blast just to see get a reaction out of you. And you would be like, and I would just like, what the fuck? You know yeah. what I'm saying? But she really came through my mother's last two years on this planet. My, my mother was struggling, and now she started. She was a drug dealer in Manhattan. She had her own little spot in Spanish Harlem, and she made millions. And she started coming over to Jersey at night. And I didn't really know what was going on. They weren't lesbians or nothing. But they were just dear friends. She would sleep on the couch, and they would go to the track together. And then one day my mother died. And, you know, in reality, my mother had a brother. My my mother had an ex-husband. She was the first person I called. And she came over and set up the funeral. We went and identified the body together. And she picked out a dress for her. And then it was her against my stepdad. And she knew my stepdad had shot people and had been a criminal. She didn't give a fuck. She took control of the wake. She started throwing people out of the wake. (laughs) She choked the fucking funeral director for putting the wrong dress on my mother. Oh, fuck. I mean, it was fucking classic. But then she did something that went the ordinary. She made a promise at the wake that she would take care of me. And I was like, you know, this is why that my mother's wake taught me a lot about life. That's why you never see me at funerals. Yeah. Because I can't deal with them. Because in my heart, I want to go up to people and go, you know what? Ralphie didn't like you and you didn't like him. Get out of here. Yeah. You didn't like Ralph either. You accused him of doing this. Get the mm-hmm. fuck out of here. You, you got to go too. I'm one of those people. So before I go and start throwing people out and calling people and start a fist fight, I don't go to those things because I, it goes back to my mother's funeral. I lived it. I lived people who said to me, if you need something, call. And after my mother died, they changed their phone number. But Zoraida was my mother's friend. She would... She would come over and give me $200 every Sunday, and she would bring me over a nickel bag. And if I was in a rut, I would go into the city, and she'd give me cash. Then I started getting blow from her, and then it went sideways. And one day I stopped talking to her. One thing that she did was she called out my dad on the on the, uh, the, the headstone. Mm. She called my dad personally and said, what's going on with the headstone? And he goes, well, we have to let it sit. Let the concrete settle, the the ground settle, and she's like old school Cuban. She's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You got 30 fucking days to go over there and put a headstone down there. 60 days came. My stepdad never did it. She took a yellow cab from Spanish Harlem and went to his business and got out of the cab and started calling him a cunt. (laughs) He didn't even have the decency to buy her a headstone. Mm -hmm. So she went and bought a headstone and put from your son and your best friend and your sister. Mm. And she put the headstone on. I always remember that story. Right. When you called me three, four months ago mm-hmm. and told me that Ralphie didn't have a headstone, mm-hmm. I wanted to kill myself because I had forgotten about my situation with my mother. Like, I never even thought about a fucking headstone. Yeah. I don't know if you, under- you guys understand how bad I felt for a week or two mm-hmm. after that. Like, I wanted to go to anybody Ralphie helped and just put a bullet in their fucking head, mm. including his management, all the people who took money out of his pocket, his agents, all these so-called helpers and whatever. Like, I was fucking angry. Like, and I was angry at myself. I was angry at myself because I never asked. I don't want any connection with his wife at all. Mm. 
Like I, I, I saw what he went through before he passed and from heaven or hell or purgatory or Arby's, <laughs> yeah. he is, yep. yeah. and he's looking down. Yep. I don't ever want him to think I crossed him and talked to that woman. You know, she when she was looking for money for the documentary, I pretty much shut her down because I knew exactly what she was going through. She wasn't doing that to honor his memory. Right. She was doing that to put two fifty in her pocket from Netflix, mm. or so she thought. Right. Okay, right. which is why you put a special together. So when I heard that they were putting a special together, and nobody even thought about a fucking headstone, I was just blown. Away. <laughs> what the fuck are you giggling about? Nobody. <laughs> Era. I knew a second ago, but now <laughs> keep just keep going went from where you told it because then <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you know that little forehead you got. <laughs>